Come on in. Come on in. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, can you hear me? Oh my God. Something about this interview did not, oh my God, that has I'm never like, happened before. It has never happened. I'm like, okay, God, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we are going to have a wonderful time despite the technical difficulties. I'm just going to, um, you can share it onto your page if you like. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that your um, viewers, people on your page can um, see the broadcast as well. And we are going to get started here. Oh, gosh, I tell you the truth. <laughs> I look a little dark, but I think I'm okay. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. So despite technical difficulties, welcome to Wanda's Warriors Live. We had to do it in another format tonight due to volume difficulties. And so I want to welcome you today. Um, it's actually the last Thursday in the month of June. And I don't know where the time went. And just welcome to Wanda's Warriors Live if you have a birthday in June or anniversary, happy birthday, happy anniversary, whatever you're celebrating in June. I have a wonderful guest on tonight and I am just honored to have her. <laughs> and we um, are sisters in an empowerment group. And so um, I just can't wait for her to tell you all what God is doing in her life and how God is using her to bless the kingdom. And so I just want to give a snippet of her bio because I want her to tell you more about who she is and what she is called to do. So good evening, Prophetess Michelle. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for everyone that's joining in. Good evening. Thank you for joining in. And so um, my guest tonight is Jackie Kane. Yeah. The beautiful Jackie Kane. And um, I just want to read a snippet of her bio. And she is a woman who was on a mission to lead anyone who has always felt last and unworthy in their lives to a place of empowerment where they connect with God to live a life of freedom in him. To understand that the trials come to work for our good if we would only allow him to use us for his purpose. That goes in line with Romans 8 and 28, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All things work together for the good. <laughs> yeah. She is um, the founder of Ladies Empowerment Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, where she posts inspirational quotes and lives to encourage, uplift, and empower. ADJ Empowerment Enterprises LLC is her company, where she offers services such as empowerment parties, one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentorship, leadership courses, and much more. She is a first-time author of the book, what it are you chasing and it's available on amazon and kindle life has taken her on repeat roller coaster rides i can truly testify to that until one day while finishing up an empowerment course on facebook with tears in her eyes she finally said enough she began to purposely work on herself her relationship with god and her relationship with self, then her relationship with others. The journey has not been easy, but she is determined to build a legacy that would inspire generations to come. 
Her motto is God is building something for his people that includes all his people. Oh yeah, I love that motto. <laughs> Good evening, Minister Jackie. Thank you for joining in from South Carolina. We really appreciate that. Thank you for Thank everyone you. that's coming in. If you could put in the comment section on where you're tuning in from, we want to see who all is tuning in from different platforms. And so Jackie, yes, tell us about this <laughs> empowerment journey that you're on. Honey, and who, I needed it today. Who is Jackie Kane? <laughs> Jackie Kane is just somebody who is just, uh, just unapolog. I'm learning to be unapologetically me. Um, I just have a heart for God's people. And, and especially guys, women at this point in time is my ministry for right now. That's the season that I'm in. And I just, you know, it's just so many of us that's out here just hurting and broken and bruised and feel abandoned. And th what God told me was, he said, I need you to go after my orphans. I need for you to go after those women who feel like they've had a biological mother and father, but they feel like I've yes. abandoned them. So that's my mission is to, to provide hope and encouragement and empowerment and to hopefully amen. lead them back to the one who amen. saved us all amen and so you had to get to a point where you said enough yeah what what led up to you getting to that point because sometimes that's what it we need for us to get back to god we have to get to that breaking point yes i just i got tired of 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 the roller coaster ride you know i got tired of of self-medicating i was using alcohol to self-medicate and i tell my own truth because it's to tell my truth um and we froze that's why i stopped but we just gonna pray god just gonna cover this broadcast and we're gonna push amen. Forward. um amen yeah. but i just yeah i just got tired of of living that kind of lifestyle i was i was one of those people nobody ever really knew because I was smiling on the outside and life was, I was pretending that life was so okay on the outside, but I was tore up on the inside. And I just got to a point where I was like, I know there's gotta be something better. I know there's gotta be something different. And I knew that the, the enemy was fighting me so hard because I figured, okay, well, God must have something he want me to do, you know? Yeah. So, and I had no idea that it was gonna be on this magnitude, but, <laughs> But I thank God for it now. I just got tired. I just got tired of pretending that everything was all right when it was. And that's a lot of times we do that. It's like we're existing and not living. And, you know, and the Bible talks about having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It's like you, we go to church in informality. We raise our hands in formality. You know, you may say the Lord's Prayer in formality, and it's just like repetitious, repetitious, repetitious. And, and that's not a relationship. That's a form of religion. And it just gets old. And until you get that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, that's when things have to change. Amen. Now I see why the enemy was fighting this interview, because I'm in total agreement with you. I speak a lot about relationships because I have been a church girl all my life and this is no, and I have to say this because some of us are still newbies and we get in our feelings, but it's not about our feelings. I was a church girl all my life. I was raised in church. I, I was raised in Bible school. I was raised in Sunday school, but I never was taught to have a relationship that it was the relationship that was going to bring me through. You know, it, I was taught that you pray about it. You pray about it and then you go on. Well, when you pray about it and nothing happens the next day, then what do you do from there? Yeah. And so many people, you know, they grow up in religion mm -hmm. and, you know, because, you know, or they go to the church because their mama went to the church or their great grandmama mm -hmm. went to the church. And it's just a form and fashion and you don't have that relationship with God. And you got to have that relationship with God. And I think about, and I want you to elaborate on this. Now, here we are over a year. We've been in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if people should have had a relationship with God during this time. Now, during the pandemic, how did that change for you? 
um, in your relationship with God? Did it draw you closer to God? What What did it do for you? For me, it definitely drew me closer. It gave me that time to make, I just had to sit still. And, and I personally think that, and if you read more in Revelation, then you can, you can relate to what I'm about to say. But God has done something where he had to shut everything down for all of us to realize, yeah, that we are the ministry first. And, and, mm -hmm. and okay, now see you opening up some doors there, Sister Wong. Because uh, <laughs> this is my lane. I can flow in this all day long. Uh, but flow it, it's in a, it, flow in it. This, it's a personal thing. And, and the reason why everything had to happen like it was, because I personally think that God was just sick and tired and very angry with a lot of us, including myself. Now, you all going to get it right because salvation is always there. But I'm sitting everybody down because I need for you to understand who I am and who I really am. Not for who you think I am. I'm not the person that you need to just pray about when you need to be obeyed. I'm the person who yes. wants to have a relationship with you. And if you allow me to do that, and sometimes he has to take away all the distractions. He has to take away the money. He has to take away the things that we could not do. So we just had to sit down. Now, some people I don't think took advantage of that, but I'm so glad I did because it, it, it has truly built who I am. Yeah. And yeah. not only, um, it's, it's like God put the world <laughs> yeah. in a timeout you know and mm -hmm. you know some churches closed and and some aren't opening back up you know mm -hmm. you look at so many people they were worshiping idols they were worshiping money worshiping celebrities and worshiping just programs but god said i want you you know i mm -hmm. want your whole heart and i think that's what the pandemic did you know for a lot of us because i know mm -hmm. it made me get closer to him and it's like if you should not have come out the pandemic the same way that you mm -hmm. came in no mm -hmm. one should mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. one should no one and if you sat for a year or so with no mm -hmm. not getting close to god and not having a relationship with mm -hmm. him then more than likely you don't want one or, you know, you're not seeking that. And, and that's sad. Mm -hmm. That's very sad. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And I've always want, I've always had that personality where I've always wanted more. I've always, when I was raising my children, I really couldn't afford to do a lot with them. The only time we could really go on vacation was income tax time. Um, but I've always mm -hmm. wanted more. And I just, I just want more. I want more of God's grace. I want more of his goodness. I want more of his love. I want more of his happiness. I want everything that's attached to my name. So in order yes. to get that, I got to continue to build a relationship. Because I, I think a lot of people think that I got the relationship, I'm good. But they don't realize that there's a God of more. And much yeah. more. You know? Mm -hmm. so, I just want everything attached to my name and I just like being in the company of women who are not settling for right here that let, allow your mindset to see beyond what you can even imagine because it's possible. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And prophetess Michelle says it's a heart issue. You know, yes. that God, uh, you know, during this time, you know, God had to get down in there in our hearts. You know, so you, you have to do your own self-evaluation of a heart check. Was your heart right? You know, was was people heart right going in this pandemic? And is their heart right coming out of the pandemic? You know, these right. are self-evaluations that we have to take, you know, on our own and be aware and also make changes. Amen. 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 Yeah. I see a lot of people have used it as an uh some people, I'm very in tune to who, who I listen to and who I, you know, glean from. And I, some people have used this as an opportunity to manipulate God's word on people, I think. Yeah. Um, especially yeah. in prophecy, I see it a lot, um, where they have yeah. people pay for a word. And uh, I just, yeah. I, just yeah. <laughs> I can't get with that. Yeah, and people do it. And people yeah. do it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you don't have to pay for God. You don't mm -hmm. have to pay for no prophecy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, God's going to deal with those false prophets. Exactly. 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 Now, Jackie, you're also a first-time author of your book. And the book is called 
what yeah. it are you chasing? That's a sermon right there. <laughs> <laughs> amen and amen again. And it is what, what it, it. Mm -hmm. are you chasing? So, yeah. Yeah. So how did you come about that title? And, you know, tell us about your book. Well, the book is, is a self-help book. It's a book slash workbook um, because there's areas in the book that you can write um, through because it's giving you, because this is me. I, I don't proclaim to be a rocket scientist, but I like relatable things because my God is a relatable God to me. So the book is broken down and it's, it's, it's in simple steps. It's a book of healing. It's a book of deliverance and, and restoration um, through the word of God. There's a lot of scripture in the book. There's places in the book where you can write down different, there's different exercises and you can go through it and actually write in the book. Um, and it's, we have to, I had to figure out what it, I was chasing, it was not connecting me to my purpose. So now, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And it's an ongoing thing too, sis. I, I figured, because um, not too long ago, I, I was trying to do things that were not connected to my name. And um, now Christian folks know what I'm talking about. And, uh, but I had to reevaluate yet again and say, okay, God, what, what, what is it that I'm chasing? You know, and, and I had yeah. to realize that as long as we align with him and, and seek ye first him, chase after his mm -hmm. faith, then everything else lines up. It lines yeah, up. Yeah, because that word it, that word it in your title, those two those two letters, IT, that can mean anything. You know, you have mm -hmm. people that are chasing titles. You have people that are chasing money, people that are chasing relationships, you know, and but they're not chasing God. Mm -mm. No. And it's like, what it are you chasing? I love that mm -hmm. title. I mean, that mm -hmm. title, can it, it's a broad title and it can cover so much. Yes, it can. It can, and we just have to make sure we're chasing the right thing, because uh, you can chase money, you can chase fame, you can chase titles, you can chase all of that. But if that's not what God has for you, once you achieve it, you're gonna find yourself. You there's no peace attached to it, you know. And I no. I try to tell people that because the enemy also has things that he will you know grant people, and we get confused sometimes. But his only job is to build you up, just to tear you back down. So we got to make so sure. True. We, yes, we got to make sure we're chasing God because even the trials that come along are still working for our good. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. And that's yeah, and that's the difference. And you know, a lot of people, you know, they get that when you said it's working for your good. You know, Romans eight twenty eight, and it mm -hmm. says all things work together for the good. And a lot of times, you know, we don't want the all. It says right. all things. We want some things <laughs> work together or a few things <laughs> work together. But it says all things. So it's like God is going to take you through some trials and through some tribulations. You know, look at just through the Bible. Everyone went through something, you mm -hmm. know, whether it was Job, or, you know, just different ones. They went through something. But mm -hmm. the my, my dad, he always says, the best way out is through. So mm -hmm. you've got to go through something and you just can't stay stuck in the middle because in that middle is that messy part. You know, that's where God is refining you and he's building character and he's molding you. But you've got to go through that. So that's where that chap, that verse, all things and all things is not always going to be pretty. All things mm -hmm. is not always going to feel comfortable. It's going to be very uncomfortable, but you've got to go through them because Amen. God is going to get the glory out of it all at the end of the day. Amen. Amen. And Amen. I, if I can take it back off what you said, I think the second, mm -hmm. the, the second part of that is according to his purpose. And I his, think his purpose, his purpose. And we need to make sure, I try to touch on that and we need to make sure we are, you know, trying to teach on that real heavy because I think that's a lot of the breakdown is that I'm doing all of this, God, but I'm doing it for what I think I need. And when this thing doesn't unfold, like I think it should, I think I, it should, 
Now I'm upset with God. But we got to make sure we are leaning into his purpose for our lives because his, whatever he thinks for us, whatever direction he takes us in, all will be well, even through the trial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even through and the- I think, you know, that's, you know, whatever you do, um, whatever project or whatever, you know, we should always pray. You know, God, is this your will? Because yes, it can may benefit the kingdom, but it may not be in the will of God for you to do it at that time. Because mm-hmm. everything is to be done in a time and in a season. And, and you don't want to go ahead and put something out there or try and do something without being in the will of God. Amen. Just like every door opened is not an open door of God. The enemy knows how to open some doors too to make it look like it's of God. So you mm-hmm. always should pray and use discernment. And so uh, what I'm finding um, during this time, during the pandemic, that it seems that the saints have a discernment deficiency. You know how you have an iron deficiency? <laughs> you know, it, it's like the saints have a dis- discernment deficiency. And it's, you know, just going out here, just starting churches and doing this and doing that and getting titles. And it's like, did God really call you to do that? And that's when you have to check the fruit to know whether they were called of God. Come on. Check the fruit. Come on. Check the fruit. Check the fruit. That, that, oh my God. Now I really see why the enemy was fighting this interview. I really do. Because that's what I talk about all the time. If you, you can't, you, okay. Because I have to get permission to say stuff. But as somebody who okay. was newly walking into a gift, um, the gift of prophecy was laid on me maybe two or three months ago. Um, I guess it, I, it was always there, but I never knew that it was there. Because I didn't know, I never, I knew of it, but I didn't realize that I had the gift. So when the gift became okay. inevitable to me, I was like, okay, God, now how how do I, what do I do from here? So, you know, you try to, you try to get help from different places and stuff and like that. But a lot of people, what I'm seeing now, they are truly taught up in, caught up in the title and not the work. It, yes. It's like God's people out here dying in these streets, but we want to make sure you put the title in front of our name. I don't, um, I don't sit well with that because I see the pain I, I, and I see the hurt in, in folks and in women's eyes all day, you know, because God puts them in my path. So I'm like, what are we doing here? We're going to have another, um, you know, all white service or are we going to be in the street yeah. leading some people to Christ, you know? So that's just where I am. And I know I'm not the most popular when it comes to all of that stuff, but that's just where my heart is. My heart is, is truly through service with the people. That's just where it is. Amen. Amen. A servant's heart. And um and reading some of the comments and they're talking about checking the fruit. And Prophetess Michelle said some were sent and some just went. And that's true because it talks mm-hmm. about, you know, many were called, but few were chosen. And it's like, you know, everybody wants to be a prophet or a prophetess nowadays. It's, that's like the going title. But with that title comes warfare. Oh, Are yeah. you prepared to handle the warfare that comes with the title? Right. Absolutely. How you going to, you know, you done went bypass. You ain't served in the church. You mm-hmm. ain't been an armor bearer, minister, deacon. You walk past people. You don't speak to them. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you you don't tithe. Oh, don't get me started on that. You don't tithe. You don't <laughs> give your offerings. But you want to be a prophet yeah. or a prophetess. Mm-hmm. No, you, you can't do that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They proper line. That. That's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> proper line. Exactly. Exactly. You know, That's and it. who wants to, why would you want to bring unnecessary warfare on yourself? Right, right. And if people only yeah, need to sleep at night, yeah. 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 It's, it's rough. Like, we, uh-uh, go ahead. Please go ahead. Because I'm so loving this. We, 
It's like, man, the devil going to fight you each and every day anyway. You think I want to add some additional war warfare onto myself? No, I I'm not about titles. It, it, it should be about going out there, getting those souls, being called to the marketplace. You know, mm -hmm. we are to be beyond the four walls of the church. There, we have a world out here. You have over 600,000 people that have died during the pandemic. People are hurting. We are to go mm -hmm. out here and get those people. Tell them about Christ. A lot of people mm -hmm. then lost hope. You know, they're like, why would God allow, you know, a relative, you know, or, or someone to pass? And, you know, they may be mad at God. We have to have a servant's heart. We have to have a heart for God. And, you know, we talked about um, just this snippet at choir rehearsal um, yesterday. And we was talking about how Mary just sat at the feet of Jesus, how she just wanted mm -hmm. to know more about Jesus. And then, you know, then Martha going to get mad. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you're seeing that a lot today. You have you have the true remnants that have risen and, you know, they want more of God. You know, they're fasting. They're getting in the word of God. They're getting, you know, in that secret closet and letting God speak to them. But then you have others that are so concerned about the affairs of the world. What, mm -hmm. what this one got on? What, what service? Of, what are they doing over here? And it's like, you got to be concerned what God is concerned about. God ain't concerned about all that. Mm -mm. He's not. He's not. And yeah. and I praise, I thank God for women like you, my sister, because the other part of that is we don't get offered. If you the new kid on the block, then yeah. you you want yeah, you already know where I'm going with this. Um Yeah, know, I know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thankful for your platform. I'm thankful for Dr. Kishma and all the platforms that we are I'm allowed to be on, uh, with no judgment, because it's like you either fall into the trap of, okay, I see the gift on you, but I need for you to stay up under me so I can manipulate your gift and I can yeah. use your yeah. gift to gather more flock for my house. Um, yes. If I can just be honest. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I thank God for women like you who are, who allow, you know, people like me, who's, who's kind of a baby in ministry, but not a babe in Christ. To, to come mm -hmm. forward because my only goal is to spread the good news. I don't want to, he, God is a God of salvation. You know, I don't want to be yeah. controlled. I can smell a controlling spirit from 10 miles away. I can't do control mm -hmm. anymore, you know? Yeah. And I told, I was talking to God about this the other day and then I'm going to be done. But I said, I need, I feel like I need to say this because I feel like somebody else on here needs to hear this. And I began to ask him, I said, father, People keep telling me that I need to be up under somebody and I need to learn and they need to teach me before they release me. And I'm just being honest. And he told me, he said, listen, from the day you were born, I had you in training. Mm. You didn't even realize that when, you, when, when, when I breathed life into your lungs is when your training started. He said, everything My that God. you went through yeah, somebody, I don't know who this is on this live, but somebody needs to hear this. Everything that you've gone through, I was teaching you then. Mm. So I am your teacher. And when I need for somebody to speak a word into your life, I will send them to you. That's a godly connection. Yes. Because God is not pleased when, when you go to some of these folks and you try to get, you know, oh, thank, praise God. Praise God, long life natural. I knew it was for somebody. She said that was for her. She said it was clearly for her. Yes, because yeah. trust certain people. But but it's gotten to a point now where everybody just wants a congregation. But who's teaching the congregation to minister the life that's inside of them so that they can be about? Because the Bible says we all have gifts, right? Yes. So who's training everybody in the congregation to operate in their gifts? Because I, all, my assignments are only this many. Your assignments are only this many. We need to empower each other so you can be about your assignment. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm done. I just get, <laughs> whoo. 
you can flow you can flow you you this is a a free a free platform you can flow there are no restrictions and whatever god gives you release it yeah i just i cannot i can't so i i that's one of my missions um because she is me was birthed almost two almost two years ago and from she is me uh, he has, he, I've, I've had a very dear sister of mine that is now a pastor. We've got a, a, a young lady that started a senior ministry that's flourishing now. So I tell people, like you said, check the fruit. Check the, check fruit. the fruit. Check the fruit. If I go to your congregation and everybody there is, is looking like they're just there to be in another routine, and I don't see anything growing. I don't see any trees. Trees. Faith is a tree that's supposed to grow. It starts mm -hmm. with the mustard seed. So where is your endurance? And that one of the seven characteristics of God. Where is your faith? Where 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 is the the good stuff? You know what I'm saying? So that's what mm -hmm. I need to see. And if I don't see that on your life, then I can't be a part of what you got going on. I just can't because I don't have time to wait. Amen. Amen. Because just as we are in the natural that is how we should be in the spiritual we grow daily we grow every day the hair on our heads grow every day our cells on in our body they shed you know they grow so if you're in a place and you're not growing spiritually what are you doing there for why are you there check the fruit if you have an apple tree it's not going to bring forth pears it's going to bring forth apples and at the bottom of the tree you have all of these branches and what the branches do is that they spread out and that's the different parts of the body of Christ you may be there to, to teach to be a teacher I may be there you know to help the ushers or because that that's a teaching that's a ministry as well that's a yeah. ministry of health you know and, and but we're all doing it for the edification and the for the body of christ and for god not to bring on like an arrogance or to make ourselves look mm -hmm. better oh i mm -hmm. clean the bathrooms you got some people don't even want to clean the bathrooms don't even want to fold up a chair they see mm -hmm. something on the floor in the house of god they don't even pick up you know a piece of trash or, or tissue or anything mm -hmm. it all starts with servanthood that's the most humblest part is being a servant. Yeah. And that's what that and that's what that fruit when that's that root of that fruit is being a servant. And if you can't do that, then then you don't need to be out here proper line to people. And 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 um and let me tell you, let me let cause okay. This this is the God, this is the God that that uh that I talk about, the God that's in my life. That same person in ministry, right? If you are on the cleanup crew, the cleanup crew is a ministry. That's a ministry. I, yes. Yes. It's a ministry. So if you start there and you're humble enough, okay, Father, help me say it like you want me to say it, God. If you start there and you're showing God that I'm humble enough and, and, and my heart is truly of service to clean the bathrooms of the church, to pick up the trash of the church, to clean up behind my minister and his wife at the church, then that can grow into something. Maybe you can now, you know, let's let's start some entrepreneurship classes in the church. So your service for, for doing that, <coughs> excuse me, God is gonna honor that because your heart is pure and is humble and is teachable and is reachable. So now, okay. I see you doing that. So let me talk to this brother. Let me talk to this sister to see, okay, what are your goals in life? Did you ever want to start a janitorial service? Because this is your foundation right here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. is your foundation right here. Even something as simple as baking, pie, and show them how to do this. Because what you're doing, you're starting in that the foundation. And that's where you build from on a solid foundation. Now this thing can flow through you because God is creating, he's, he's growing your ministry, your ministry of service in you through whatever it is. And then watch that thing unfold as you begin to trust God in that thing. You know, and then just, God will. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. And then God will bless you with teaching other people how to clean and to clean well. You take that and become an LLC, a business, get contracts. And if you had that LLC before COVID, then when COVID came, you could get the PPE loans and get contracts cleaning buildings. That's how that works. That's how that works, sis. Now, now, if I could give you a high five, I would give you a high five. Because I just said this the other day. Some of us who, who applied for PPP, which y'all say a prayer for me out there because I'm still waiting. But some of us who got that money, it's not it's not even with the unemployment. You you giving people in the state of Georgia where I am, most minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. So when these people started receiving, not everybody you can put in one bucket in one barrel. Some of these people were taking that extra PU, PPU money, uh, unemployment money, and they were actually beginning to build a life that they were pleased wow. with. So now that they're snatching it away, some of these people were really like, okay, well, let me start this LLC while I got this cushion right here. Yes. Everybody didn't mm -hmm. just take it and just be like, oh, I'm just going to go on 50 million vacation. Some people out there really are struggling. They're trying to find their way. They're trying to make their pain into a purpose. Yeah. You know, and that's what God does. He'll take your pain and turn it into something so beautiful. Yes, he will. And, you know, that's, it, it's, that's the beauty also in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of us were blessed tremendously in the pandemic. People bought homes in the people in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. People, you know, started real ministries in the pandemic. You know, people got married in the pandemic. You know, I got a granddaughter in the pandemic. I got a daughter-in-law in the pandemic. You know, God just added to my family in the pandemic. You know, there's um was it Kurt Franklin in the family, you know, when they was in the family, that was way back. They had a song called There's a Blessing in the Storm. Yes. And and yes. that's what COVID, what COVID was a storm. But the people that stayed in the will of God, they were blessed. They didn't go without. God gave us favor in the storm. God gave us favor in the pandemic. Amen. Amen. And you just have to step out on faith. You know, I don't think we talked, we don't, I don't think we show, we can talk a lot, but I think we need to show more faith. You know, what faith really and, looks like. Amen. And Long Life um, Natural said she was close to serious eviction and God blessed her with a business that doubled her profit. Wow. That's favor. That's favor. That's favor. That's favor. God That's said, no, not so. Not so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm and gonna then, bless you because you my daughter. As long as you stay in, in the will of God, and I know her and I know where her business is, and, and she blesses people. She has a sincere heart, and God is gonna honor that because her heart is pure. God mm -hmm. is gonna honor that. Amen. Amen. I needed to hear that right there too. So thank you for that. Um, and I think I think that's a lot of we, we need to make sure that we are giving, you know, even if you don't, yes. it, it, it's not always a dollar, you know, but you never know what a person, a person can be made up, but they don't know how they're going to do what they're going to do the next day. So yes. I, I, God honors our hearts when we give with no motives. Yes. Just, just be good to people, you know, and I want to, I want to speak, if I can, if I can say something to her, um, he, yes. you're exactly right. God, God is honoring your heart from right where you are. And I, and I hear manifestation. I hear abundance. I hear overflow coming Thank down to you. Oh, you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So we stand in the um, briefing with you, my sister. Yeah. Um, that, that, that everything um, is something, but it's something, going, it's something in your life that's trying to counteract what God is doing. So whatever that is, you got to release it. You got to let that go because God truly sees your heart and he wants to bless you continually. You think you've seen something yet. The spirit is saying you ain't seen nothing yet, but whatever that is, and you know what it is, I don't. You got to let that go because it's coming, it's counteracting what God is trying to do in your life. You got to let it go. Amen. 
Amen. Got to let it go. You know, any anything that's a distraction, you have to let it go. And, you know, we don't know what that could be a relationship, that that could be anything, but you've got to let it go. God needs your full attention. Amen. You know, um, Amen. I saw a quote one time. It said, um, sometimes distractions have names. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah. And, and yeah. it has to be removed. It could be family, so, you know, yeah. and, and that's hard. That's hard. <laughs> you, yeah, that's hard. You know, just because you blood, that don't mean they not toxic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can love them, forgive them and love them from afar. Yes, absolutely. And that, I think that's one of the hardest things. If I had had somebody um, in ministry, um, but I thank God for my sisters, because I do have one sister that's in ministry, things to do. is to place people. Because God said you gotta love them, but like I always say, you don't have a love. You don't have. To, you can love them from cross town, and it's okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But that was hard for me. That was hard. I know that was hard for me. And then in one of the um, women's ministry groups that I'm in, and we was talking about that, and I said God will send you destiny helpers. People mm -hmm. along the way that don't want nothing from you. They just want to help you. They're assigned to you. And so th that within itself, I hear you, God. There's a difference between someone that's assigned to you and someone that is attached to you. Ooh. We have that's to good. use discernment and ask God. When someone comes into your life, ask God or say, who sent you? Because the enemy can send people to attach to you, to attach to what you're doing. They're not there to help you, but they're to take from you, to take from your business or to take your ideas. You're telling them your ideas or, or things that you, you know, want to do in the future. And they are going to take that and steal your idea. So you have to be careful on who is attached to you and who is assigned to you. Because the person that God has assigned to you, they are there to help you, to push you forward. They don't want nothing for it from you. And they may just be there for a season. And that season is to get you to the next level of God because so, that's their assignment. But when someone is attached to you, they're going to come and they're going to take from you. They're going to laugh on you. They're going to manipulate people on you. They're going to bash mm -hmm. you. And the next thing you know, they are gone. That's how you know the difference between someone who is attached and someone who is assigned. So when someone comes into your life, male, female, whoever it is, always pray and ask God, who sent them? Who sent them? Amen. And don't move. If God don't answer, you wait till you get your answer. Amen. Amen. That's good, honey. I'm, we're going to have to talk about that one off the broadcast. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Attached versus assigned, you know, and, and I had to learn the hard way. You know, I'm transparent. You know, I, I thought, you know, that some people were in my life to help me. But they were attached to me. You know, I've even had people say, oh, yeah, I'm going to get attached to you because I see where God is taking you. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they try and steal your ideas and steal your story. And, and But it's, you ain't cried one night for, for this. You know, you ain't cried one night for this story. You haven't endured near war warfare for what has been placed on my life. So those are the people that are attached. The people that are assigned, when you feel like you can't even get up out the bed, they're going to pray you through. They're going to come see about you if they can. And and just, they're going to uplift you. And they're going to push you. You got to have pushers in your life. You know, if you don't have any pushers in your circle, you know what they say, that you are like the, the five people that's closest to you. Examine who's the, fi the five people that are closest to you. Mm. Are they pushing you? Are they edifying you? Are they empowering you? Are they inspiring you? If not, they got to go. Amen. I don't care who they are. Amen. Amen. They got to that go. Pulling, they got to go. That pulling, that yeah. pulling is what I've been talking a lot about lately. And um, 
that pulling will leave you exhausted. It lit yeah. because some people will really come into your life and they pull the living life out of you. But we yes. have to understand yeah. that we have we have to take responsibility for that though. Because they can only get as close as we allow them to. And mm -hmm. that's hard. Yeah. Especially when it's coming yeah. from a familiar face. But yes. It's okay, God, I hear you. It's like you we have to realize with elevation comes detachment. Mm. You you can't you can't go higher with all this weight on your wing. Because it's weighing I'm you there. Down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. And it's a place of isolation. Yeah. It's like, okay, so here's an analogy. Thank you. I hit God. Oh, Lord. So when you're going up a mountain, mm -hmm. if you've ever hiked, the higher you go up, the less air there is. Mm -hmm. And you can't take a lot. You can't take a lot of bags on your back or anything. The higher you go up on a mountain. That's the same as when God is elevating you. Mm -hmm. Everyone can't go with you mm -hmm. when, when God is elevating you. They don't have the air. They don't have the capacity. They don't have the anointing. They don't have the calling. So everybody mm -hmm. can't go with you. Yeah. And the higher is. you go, God is going to fizzle them out. He's going to separate them. Yeah. He's going to separate them. Yeah. And, we and it can be lonely. That elevation can be lonely. Yeah. You talking to a single woman, um, so a single and celibate. So I true un, truly do understand loneliness. Um, and I, yeah. but I get so, but that's when I really hear from him. I hear from him when I'm mm -hmm. riding in my car with nothing on, just my window down. And I, it's gotten to a point now where I honestly had to really work on my balance because I was like, okay, God, I know it. I'm, I'm not living life. I'm just existing. Um, and I thought mm -hmm. that just hearing from you, but you gave me permission to live life. It's okay for me to live my life, you know, and I still hear from you. So that's where I'm flowing right now. I'm coming out of the, I'm, I'm, I'm setting boundaries because mm -hmm. I think that that is, is setting boundaries. And if you, if a huge part of development is setting boundaries and yes. you cannot, you, it's all right to leave your phone sitting over somewhere you don't have to answer every text message. You don't have to pick up on every call. You can just let it sit there. Until I, right now, what I'm working on is creating my time. At a certain time of the night, I don't get on social media anymore. I make myself sit there and I find something real funny on TV. And I make, because I, it brings me joy. And yeah. I think that's, that, that will relieve a lot of that lonely spirit. Because um, that lonely spirit depression or something like that so we're gonna counteract that in the spirit for whoever else needed to hear that amen and yeah. you know also to, um with that loneliness it can lead to idleness in your mind and that's yeah. the devil's playground so you know you have to be careful you know with that as well mm -hmm. yes absolutely yeah and one of my models that i always say at the end of my show is to live out loud. And that's mm. something that I had to learn when I was battling cancer is to live out loud. And, you know, just like on our phones, how we have the function of the do not disturb button mm. that's on your phone. You have to have that in your life as well. You have to set those boundaries. And sometimes you got to put a do not disturb around yourself. Just like in the pandemic, everybody got to stay six feet. You got to have that in your life as well because you need some self-care. You need to have that one-on-one -on -one time with God and you got to just block the whole, everybody off at some point. Amen. Amen. I like this flow because mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been talking lately about, I, because I think this is a problem in a lot of our leadership um, because we have to remember that even as a, a prophet, a minister, a pastor, there's time when we need to go back in the congregation. So I like this flow because yes. I'm, I'm giving and I'm taking, I'm giving, I'm, 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 I'm teaching, but I'm also learning. And if we keep that mentality, then I think it'll keep us humble and God can deal with yes. the humble. You know, cause nobody knows it all. We need each other. That's why we're here. So nobody can, we can't afford to get the arrogance and the big head 
about, well, I'm this and I, can't nobody tell me this and you know, I'm the bishop and can't nobody tell me. No, because if you really and truly are there for the ministry of the hearts of your people, how do you know their issues when they don't bring them to you? My God. You got to be able My to God. listen to your people. And people yes. are not, baby, people are coming to church and they're sick and they're dying and they're going home the same way. Because, you know, um, I gave this analogy one time when the scripture talks about um, if, any, if there's any sick among you, let them call mm -hmm. for the elders of the church. That does not only mean sick physically. You can be mm -hmm. sick spiritually, but you have to be able to, first, you got to have some elders you can trust. <laughs> right. You have to be able to call for the elders of the church. There are people out here that are spiritually sick and they ha may have some physical ailments, but a lot of times when you're sick spiritually, that can bring on some, some physical ailments as well. Mm -hmm. And that's when it takes the discernment from being under the right leadership and the right spiritual coverings to know everything is not a demon. No. <laughs> everything is not a demon. Amen. But you, you got to be into, you, you know, and it's like, if you can't, if you sick spiritually, who can you go to? You're supposed Amen. to go to your leader. Amen. That's what and they're there for. Mm -mm. But somewhere along the line, we um i'm actually doing a class but we'll talk about that later um because what the problem is we don't understand that this thing is a is a constant work on ourselves because we are the church we are the ministry so if you don't constantly work on yourself then you are allowing things to flow in your life that's gonna make some things off balance and and things are gonna be and, and there's somebody depending on you besides yourself it starts yeah. with us first, but there's somebody else out there that's depending on what you have. So we got to make sure we stay in a posture of, of giving, but we got to make sure we're receiving. Because see, you just spoke into my life. And I, ex I received that because I see your fruit. Thank you, Lord. Check the fruit. Check the fruit. That's Check the fruit. Um, sorry, I got to plug my phone. That's going to be uh -uh. the three words. <laughs> Check the fruit. <laughs> check the fruit. Check the fruit. That's the three words. Check the fruit. We're not producing no fruit. You gotta leave it alone. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, with checking the fruit and inspiring people, you know, you have um a group on Facebook and on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And YouTube, for those that are watching and they just need that word of encouragement, um, mm -hmm. a scripture or one of your lives, how can they be a part of that? Well, um, I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> because, <laughs> and I, this is another reason why I know the enemy was upset because today was the launch of my website. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I, fi we fi I finally got a website put together because I've been operating on this long time without a website. And I've been doing these interviews and they're like, well, tell, tell how people can get in contact with you. And I'm like, oh, you can email me. But today is the launching of the website and everything is on the website. So I am so in awe of what God is doing. I am. Um, before I lose Amen. myself. But <laughs> so what we're doing Yes. So what's, what's happening is, and you all are the first people that I'm saying this to. Um, oh. Yeah. And then as a girlfriend of mine would say, hear me with your heart, because I still battle this part of it. But what I'm doing is I'm going to, it's going to be a paid sub subscription. Okay. Um, and it's only 19, it's going to only $19.99 a month. And I had to, I had to make the transition, Ms. Wanda. I had Sister, I had to because I, I love all of God's people, but I really want to get to work with those people who are really ready to do some work. Amen. Um, yeah. yeah. And as the word says, you, you stop casting your pearls for months swine. Um, so I'm going to put it on the Bible so folks won't come back at me wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, that's the that's the turn that she is me is making and I, I, I didn't necessarily phrase it as she is me because it's going to be two parts. 
there's a part that we pay to do the um I'll be doing the lives in that group. They they'll have to pay the nineteen ninety nine per month. But I'll be doing the lives in that group. It'll be solely an inspirational empowerment, set you on the right path, keep you up, give you hope and encouragement. That'll be on that page. But the other part of it is that also today I joined forces with one of our community housing. Um, I don't I don't like resident residential places here and where I live. And that'll be the community service part of it. So okay. the, yes. So the funds from that paid subscription will help fund it and make it a 503C so we can help the women in the housing communities in my area. And and right now and, that's and, just me excited about it. They are both opportunities dropped in my lap as of today. Um, and I was offered to bring She Is Me into their program. So we'll be talking to women, um, you know, who are, some are less fortunate, some are not. But I'm going after those women with that defeated mindset to let them know that just because you live here does not mean that this is where you are. Your mind can take you any and everywhere. So I'm just going to be walking and talking to them and relating to them and put on my converse. I just got work to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You got to yeah. have some comfortable shoes. <laughs> exactly. And not going in preaching, oh, God, gonna, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm going in as a mother that was almost, that almost had to live in, in, in a transitional or, or um, a project home or whatever it is myself. So I know what the struggles are, um, and but just for the grace of God that I'm not there now. Um, and I know it's that they are still, we are all God's people. They are God's people. So just going in and loving them, yeah. you know, and just giving them a hug. If they need a prayer, whatever they need, that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm going for. Amen. Ain't no me, 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 you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, Look at God. See how, <laughs> now that when you know that the fruit is ripe. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's how you know that the fruit is ripe. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And just anywhere. Amen. Because it don't even have to be there. Just anywhere. Because, you know, we a, a lot of us, even I, even though I don't live in, that, in a certain area, but even I have to fight my mind to not be defeated. You know, so it ain't even about where you live. It's just going in and helping God's people to be re to show yeah. a relatable God to them. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah, and it's, it starts in the mind. Um, Joyce mm -hmm. Myers has a book called Battlefield of the Mind, and that is such a powerful book. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's really a powerful book. And, you know, and sometimes that's all someone needs is, is someone to just to speak life into yeah. them, just to encourage them to say, sister, you can make it brother you can make it you know because you don't know what they've gone through through their childhood and you know whatever growing up you know may have been verbally abused or emotionally abused and you know and here comes god will send them someone you know to encourage them and at that moment they may be at their lowest and then here you come sister jackie comes and say sister how you doing today you can make it and give that person that hug. And that just may be what they need in that moment. It's not mm -hmm. always monetarily stuff. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's it. And I just thank God for your life and for what you're doing in the kingdom. Well, thank you. Because that's, that's exactly what it is. It's kingdom building. I, I am on a mission yeah. to kingdom build because I know, I know what it feels like to thank you. You know, you kind of got to, an uh, inkling about okay god i really want to do this but how can i do that because i know i'm carrying this and carrying that so my whole goal is to show women how to take the pain like we said you you picking up at the church but now you got a mindset shift of, of entrepreneurship that's where your mindset is so how do i yes. get from here to here you know mm -hmm. i don't have the education oh I, I i don't have the patience what god can teach you through your life yeah. experiences the patience and in patience what they don't even realize is is you are growing your endurance and your endurance mm -hmm. grows your faith yeah so sometimes we just need somebody to connect the dots and i love yeah. doing it i love doing it so 
that's where I'm that's where I'm grooving to. So keep 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 a sister up in prayer. <laughs> Definitely will. Now as we um wind down, um, can you give your website so that people can go to your website and all of your social media, um, different whether your Instagram, Facebook, um, if you have a YouTube channel or whatever, so that people can stay connected with you. Yes, ma'am. The website is www.profitisjackie.com. Woohoo! Uh, profitisjackie.com <laughs> is the website, and you'll know it because it's beautiful. It was made by a beautiful young lady um, who was a dear friend of mine, Jada Bellamy, and uh, J Bell's Designs, and it's red. It is gorgeous, but it's profitisjackie.com. And I'm also on okay. Facebook as Jackie Kane. Um, I'm getting into the Instagram thing. See, I'm 49 years old, so I'm not so <laughs> <laughs> technology in tune, but I am on Instagram, Jacqueline Kane 71, I think is what it is. Yeah, but mostly I'm on okay. Facebook. Um, and then you can hit me up and get all the information you want to get about me, read about me. I've got a couple of courses on there that I'm that I'm getting ready to launch, um, and all of it is in tune to build you for your purpose. Um, so yeah, look me up, profitisjackie.com. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that has tuned in tonight for Wanda's Warriors Live. Thank you for those who will be watching the replay. I know that you have will be blessed by this because this was. A blessed broadcast and there was a lot of fruit there was a lot of knowledge and the word of God went forth so I play, pray that everyone that watched um, was blessed also share this broadcast with someone that you may know that it can bless them as well don't just keep the blessings to yourself pass the blessings along to somebody else amen amen, amen. so thank you amen. again prophetess Jackie for your yes Thank, Thank you for coming on to this platform and just being a blessing. And I play, pray Deuteronomy 1 and 11 back into your life and that mm. God will multiply everything to you a thousandfold. And for everyone that is watching, tune in next week again for Wanda's Warriors Live. You can join my mailing list at wandabrisco.org. I send out a weekly newsletter that lets you know who will be on the show. Um, for that week and any other speaking engagements um, that I'm doing. I'm going to be doing some evangelism coming this summer to other states. So, mm -hmm. you know, sign up for the mailing list um, so you can wander on the move. <laughs> so you I can see what's going on and just see how God is just blessing and how everything is for the edifying of his kingdom. So, Thank you again for tuning in to Wanda's Warriors Live. And remember, my motto is to live out loud. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay blessed, and stay kingdom-minded in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Until next time, I love you all. Bye.